the current state of work, as we know, um, chemotherapy has been the backbone in treatment of blood cancer, especially cisplatin, cisplatin-based chemotherapy. However, what we have noted that like, especially in the population and the blood cancer population, which are mostly elderly people, have um, other comorbid disease or have impaired renal function, it's not always possible to give chemotherapy and especially like cisplatin-based chemotherapy. So immune therapy was a paradigm shift um, in treatment of blood cancer. However, we have noted uh, that the immune therapy definitely has, has a pretty significant like durable clinical response, but not all patients respond to immune checkpoint therapy. Um, and response rate has been, especially with single agent immune checkpoint therapy has been something between like 20 to 30%. So now one question for us is how to improve uh, the response to immune checkpoint therapy, because if patients respond, they generally tend to have a more of a durable response to immune checkpoint therapy. So for that, um, there has been different approaches that people have been taking. One is how to combine immune checkpoint therapy, either with immune, other immune checkpoint therapy, or like how we can combine with additional agents where we have either preclinical data or um, initial like clinical information that could increase the efficacy of immune checkpoint therapy. Then the other approach, which I just discussed in my poster is how we can better select the patient population from their um, genomic profile or um, immune microenvironment profile. Is there anything that would give us an inkling which patient should respond versus who should not so that we can um, enable patient selection. So that is, uh, um, that is definitely something that we would be heavily focusing on. And um, the other one, as I just mentioned, is the combinatorial strategies. However, what I feel as a physician scientist that combinatorial strategies oftentimes lack biological insight when we are uh, combining one plus one, like how it's going to affect, it needs strong biological insight because we cannot extrapolate one tumor data into another tumor data. For example, the chemotherapy plus immune checkpoint therapy uh, benefits that we saw in um, non-small cell lung cancer patients um, was uh, we did not see that robust of a data with uh, irritable cancer. So that makes me wonder um, that all tumor types are different. So we would need strong biological rationale uh, for combinatorial strategies. And when we combine chemotherapy or immunotherapy, like what should be a rationale? Should we do a concurrent um, chemotherapy plus immunotherapy? Or do we need to do sequential uh, therapy? So those are the things that we uh, still need to explore. And then development of new agents. Uh, we are definitely like Enfortumab, we have seen the Enfortumab uh, is now coming into play and we are also using that in the clinic. Then patients with FGFR3 alterations, uh, we have now multiple trials and FDA approval for all, all uh, FGFR3-directed um, therapy. And also historically being an immunologist, like definitely those, uh, uh, I would also be interested that in how this new modalities can be combined with um, immunotherapy um, because some preclinical data and early clinical data show that patients with FGFR alteration oftentimes seem to uh, not respond to immune checkpoint uh, monotherapy. So, would it be possible? And there are ongoing clinical trials to test those questions. Is, uh, can we combine FGFR3 uh, directed therapy with immune checkpoint therapy? And would that be uh, more beneficial than either of the monotherapy? So yes, um, it is a really exciting time for bladder cancer um, because for last 30 years, the only thing we were doing with chemotherapy and now we have multiple agents um, coming into our domain. And um, it just, we have to understand how to sequence them and how to combine them uh, as well as how to uh, do a better job in patient selection for each uh, therapy.